Take your time. nó sẽ live streaming channel của mình thì mình chỉ cần gửi channel cũng được ở đó mình gửi channel thì nó sẽ có live video của nhau thì nó đây sẽ sẽ vào chung cái live đấy mạng rộng lắm năm tám mình có hai phút two minutes left for me to fix everything nó khá là Cậu bung nó tới một tin nhắn nhé Đây, tới tin nhắn Cái gần tới nhất là cái link nhỏ một chút So I'm going to send that link to the Telegram group too, okay? Uh, the send the uh, the channel of the, of, of ICO Zens. It is better. But that link is fine, right? It's just 36 waiting already. Yes. It's okay. It's sort of. Is on? Yep. Okay. Is it? Great for me, Richard. What are you? Hmm. Okay. Is it live? Live stream. Okay. So we are live streaming, Richard. So it's not live. It's not the the link that you sent me is not live though. I don't see it. Okay. So anyway, you should reload the channel because we are live streaming on another link. So okay, but then we then, then we need to then then you send that link to the announcement uh, yes. because yeah. let me okay, show you so let me show you what I'm seeing right now. That. My partner we have with that part that we sent you the link. Okay, so we are we are live streaming now. So can you hear me clearly? Yes, I can hear you well. Uh, okay. Okay, so I need to hold on one second. Okay. Okay, I, I can will, hear you well, I and I see we're live streaming. Let me send that other link to the announcement. Okay, Give me one second. see. One second. Okay, so hi everyone. Welcome to the AMA of VIT uh, COO, Richard Zan and ICO Zan. Okay, so welcome all of you to the AMA today. It's been an honor to have Richard. So he is doing some kind of like making the announcement to the channel. So let's wait for him. Have you done, Richard? Yes, I did make the announcement. So I have to make sure people move over to the new link. So I'm going to just give me one second. I okay, also need I, to tell people in this channel. Yes, that's fine. And anyway, uh, welcome all of you. And my name is Bonnie Tai from ICO Zen's an ICO rating and review website with more than 
20 ICO analysis, working every day to find the best ICO projects for people to follow, right? So right now we are having over more than 2,000, sorry, 200 ICO projects with the updating new articles. So you can visit us at icozen.com. Okay, so to talk about VIT, it's been an honor to have the CEO of VIT, Richard Dan, in the AMA today. So first of all, I will introduce the rule of the game that you are waiting, waiting for. The rule of the airdrop campaigns for VIT's ICO. Sorry, for this airdrop. Okay, so um, please take carefully look at the descriptions of this video. Excuse me, Richard. Yes, hello. Uh, can you like tie a little bit like slowlier and make the noise like kind of smaller? Oh, sure, sure. Sorry. Okay. Sorry, I was trying to uh, I was trying to move people from the old link to the new link. Okay. Thank uh, you. Thank you for the people, support. Because there's still, yeah, because there's still a lot of people waiting for the video at the wrong. Oh, yeah, I place. see. I see. Okay. Yeah. And then YouTube won't allow me to post the link, the link. So I'm trying to get them uh, to move to the new link. Yeah, I see. So have you done that? Uh, well, I'm trying to tell people to move one second. Okay, so everyone from Icozen, if you are watching this, please refer the link to people so that, so that they can have the right link to this AMA. Okay, I think we're good. Okay. I think most people have moved over, so we're good. Mm, okay. So Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, great. So, um, actually, Richard, can you introduce yourself a little bit so that the audience sure. will like, have better knowledge about you? Sure, absolutely. So my name is Richard, mm -hmm. and I am the COO of VEAT, the Chief Operating Officer. Uh, I come from a traditional finance background. I worked at Goldman Sachs for eight years, and then at Two Sigma, a quantitative hedge fund for two years before joining VEAT. I'm interested in blockchain um, as a result of speaking with my friend Daniel Wang, who is a uh, leader in the blockchain space in China. Yep. He uh, he founded Loopring, arguably the most successful decentralized crypto exchange protocol in China. Okay, great information. So Richard, anyway, um, I wanted to announce the rules for the airdrop campaigns first for people in R2. They will have the, like, the knowledge about the campaign. So, uh, would you like to announce that? Oh, I will do that. What is your opinion on, on it? Um, I think you can go ahead. And then um, if I think there are other parts I need to fill in, I'm happy to fill in later. So okay, sure. So I can announce the airdrop campaign right now. Please listen carefully and take note every note to your like recent paper. Okay, guys, here is the rule. So we have now the Google form of the quiz. Uh, which is in the description of this video, or maybe you can find it on the VIT announcement and at different parts of the AMA. I will be the one that raised the questions. It will be live and during the AMA. So your task is to enter the answer at the correct uh, in that Google form. And after you answer the last questions, there will be five questions, right? So you could hit the submit button and remember that the form will be closed in five minutes, like after the stream concludes. So don't like delay anymore and submit it because the form will be closed in five minutes. And furthermore, uh, you must have make the comments of the video in the comment sections below the vi this video, not in the live sections, remember that. And with what you wrote in questions four, Remember, question four, uh, and this one will be the like the proof that uh, you were watching the live stream. So remember, question four in the comment box, and after submitting the form, make sure that you tweet on Twitter about it and link the video. Make a tag at vidlabs at icozens and dollar tag vit and say something that you have learned during this AMA. And be sure that you follow, like, and subscribe this channel. So that's all about the description. And now I will announce that how winners will be chosen. So if you answer at least four out of five questions correctly, you will be entered the raffle. You know raffle, right? So you will have 
12 hours after the live stream in order to make your tweets and comments on the video. But remember, the Google form will close five minutes after the AMA. Remember that. I mentioned it many times, right? So you can participate even if you go on the previous airdrop event. So Chan is, Chan is open for everyone. So spamming or abusing live chat will, will result in the disqualification for sure. And uh, to talk about the number of winners, there will be 20. Okay, 20 out of the poor the people that answered correctly four out of five, and the amount of airdrop you will get is that 1,200 bit. So, and one more like very important last but not least, tokens will be distributed in August 2018. Remember that? Okay, that's it. Thanks for waiting, Richard. And sure, no problem. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so that's it about the introduction of the airdrop campaign and introduction about yourself and me, right? So guys, do you remember my name? If you remember my name, please type it on the chat, like live chats. I could be like, appreciate that. Mm, okay, so start the AMA right now. Okay, so the very first questions for your Richard. Sorry, um, can you briefly explain the meaning of the product? It is VIT, and can you tell me what is its missions and the vision? Um, actually, I have one secret to tell you. As first, when I look at your product, I pronounce it to be VIT, not VIT. So can you explain to me why is that? Uh, when I see yeah, sure. some, sorry. Yeah, because it, it looks like, um, it's kind of like invite, right? The word invite. Yes, so that's why people pronounce it as VIT. Um, before I joined the company, I also thought it was VIT. It's actually V, it uh, stands for fast in French. And we picked the name because I think that it uh, is representative of what we're trying to build. We're trying to create a uh, high performance public blockchain. So mm -hmm. I think the, a name that means fast is appropriate. Okay, so fast means like high transaction and high throughput, right? Correct, high performance. So yeah, high, high throughput, performance. low latency. <gasps> yep. Okay, great, great idea. And I love that vision and medicine. So the, another one. Where is your team located and what time and why did you come up with the idea of developing fit? Sure, so um, we are located in two offices in Beijing, China, and in the Silicon Valley uh, office in the United States. Uh, and um, so we came about this idea uh, mostly because our co-founders were noticing that the, uh, the, uh, in the blockchain infrastructure um, requires some serious upgrade, uh, mainly in the form of throughput and latency. Uh, so we basically went, went out to start Vite in order to improve throughput, latency, uh, while trying to preserve as much security as possible. Uh, and there's also the other issue of scalability, which we tackle as well. Mm, okay, cool. Great to hear that. Okay, so another one I want to ask about like the logo. The logo of Vi, sorry, sorry, my bad. The logo of it. So can you explain the logo? It's kind of like uh, the arrow, but it's like scrolling down, not like scrolling up. So can you explain to me, why is that? And because Andy, it looks like, like the letter V, um, oh. and V is the first letter of V. So it, that's yeah. why it looks like that. Okay, cool. So the logo, V, right? So it stands for VIT. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, perfect, yes. Richard. Hey guys, and now here we have the next questions. I have gathered some like survey from our community and received a lot of questions from people. So here's the one. Like, why do you think that this will be the next generation's high performance decentralized application platform? Like, could you tell me like more about the innovation of it? Sure, so there's two innovations. Number mm -hmm. one is that we are adding smart contract to the mm -hmm. DAG system. So DAG stands for Directed Acyclic Graph. It's a new way to organize the ledger. It's mm -hmm. supposed to bring higher throughput and lower latency into, into, the way, uh, into the way transactions are written into the ledger. Uh, yeah. But to, to my knowledge, no one has integrated the, concept of the, the construct of smart contract into DAG yet. So we're trying yeah. to do that. Yeah, I That's see. innovation number one. Innovation number two is that the DAG structure actually 
uh, has a security deficiency. And I'm happy to talk about that a little bit later. And we are uh, trying to address that security deficiency by introducing this other idea of a snapshot chain. Yeah, I would say those are the two main innovations. There's a few other ones with a new programming language with uh, ability for people to generate distributed applets uh, without writing any code and so on and so forth. But I would say the most uh, important changes are those two. Hmm, okay, great. So a lot of innovation, right? Like smart contract update and the language of uh, the smart contract, right? And a lot, a lot of sister. So um, anyway, I need some... I heard some voice, actually it's from my phone. It's been the first questions for you guys and actually let me explain. I ha I found you no know, like US, UK music on my phone so it would be the Korea phone music. Sorry for that guy if you are not a fan of K-pop. So here's the question, question one. Guys, please attention. Here's the first question. Mm, very easy one if you follow us from the beginning. So here's the one. What city in China is the team located? You have some seconds. You have some like, okay, no worry. A lot of time. There will be the question on the live chat box as well. Please take a carefully at that. Okay, John. I would recommend you repeating the question one more time. Just okay. in case people didn't catch it. Okay, here's the question one more time. What city in China is the team located? Have you got that, guys? What city in China is the team located? Yeah, the team located. Where is that? Guys, have you heard me? Please comment on that. No. Okay, so remember, don't comment on the live chat. Comment on the Google form. There will be the uh, question. By the way, box. Anita, I think it's come to my attention that people might not be able to leave comments until after the video is done in the comment section. Yeah, sure. So to, like we have so the rule of that, right? Video. Okay, so yeah. people must. Okay, I see that. Very good. Thanks for noticing that. Okay, so here is the next question for the continue of the AMA. So can you tell me, like, how does the message driving work? Like, I saw the message driving on the white paper. So can you tell me more about that? How does how does the message driven architecture work? Yeah, yes, I'm happy to is. explain that. So this is the way we're doing the asynchronous architecture. Um, so the whole point of asynchronous architecture is that when you execute a piece of code, you have many different lines, right? And then the way the, the lines are executed is they go the line one, line two, line three, line four, and so mm -hmm. forth. So typically, um, one line needs, one line doesn't execute until a previous line finishes executing. Yeah. Uh, but 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 theoretically, uh, line two does not have to wait for line one to finish executing. I'll give you an mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. If line one is assigning variable A to B, and line two is assigning variable C to D, these mm -hmm. two have no relationships with each other. Mm -hmm. So why have line two wait for line one? Why not get them to execute at the same time? Mm -hmm. So the asynchronous architecture is a way of allowing different sections of the code to be executed in parallel. Mm -hmm. And what message driven basically uh, means is that there are different ways to implement this asynchronous architecture. Mm -hmm. And uh, a message is basically a way of transferring information from uh, execution of one line of code to execution of another line of code. So mm -hmm. without the asynchronous setup, uh, a function call, right? So when you when you when you write some piece of code to, to call a particular function, you have to wait for that function to finish executing, and then you retrieve the result from that function. So what we have done is that you can call a function, and you don't have to wait for the result to finish. You uh -huh. keep executing other lines, okay. and then you retrieve the result when that result when the result from that function is ready. There's a different way to retrieve the data. Yeah, got it. So like the transaction doesn't need to wait for respond and request, right? But they go straight to each other. Uh, am I get like did I get it right? Uh, sort of. I think the high level takeaway is just that the uh, the high level takeaway is just that the um, the execution is faster. Execution mm -hmm. of a program is faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's two levels of uh, asynchronous setup, right? So the first level is that um, our transactions are, uh, so the way the whole DAG infrastructure works is that we're using something called the block lattice infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So every account gets its own blockchain. Mm -hmm. And therefore, when you push a transaction onto the ledger, you're no longer writing every single transaction onto the same blockchain. Uh -huh. and instead, you're writing transaction to 
each blockchain associated with each individual account. So two transactions don't have to wait for each other. Okay, uh, great. Or, or sorry, a later transaction doesn't have to wait for an earlier transaction to get on a blockchain, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so that's benefit. That's the first type of asynchronous setup. The second uh, level of asynchronous setup is that in terms of our function calls, uh, mm -hmm. uh, a line of code does not need to wait for uh, a previous line of code to complete unless there's a hard dependency. So that also helps keep things up. Mm, okay, that's great. Um, I totally, uh, I, I, I think that like people really need to read the white paper and listen to this AMA in order to like fully understand the whole meaning of that, of that term. Okay, so here we go, the next questions. Uh, this question is about snapshot chain. So to talk about that, could you like explain to me like how does it work again? So and what is sure. the snapshot chain's snapshot mechanism? Since we can take a camera to the to take a photo in the laser, right? So and if so, like if it works, right? So how is it solve? How does it solve the problem of security? As from the white paper I, I've read, and the snapshot chain is added to VIT DAC in order to like improve the security. Yes. So the idea there is that because every single account has its own blockchain, some account might have a very short chain because every chain associated with the account only contains transactions relevant to that account. In the old blockchain setup, uh, a blockchain consists of transactions happening in the entire network. So the chain gets very long, very, very quickly. But in the new setup, every account has its own chain and the chain can be very short or grow very, very slowly. Mm -hmm. When a chain grows very slowly, it's subject, it's more vulnerable to attacks, mm -hmm. right? So the idea is that someone can tamper with a block of data and then change yeah. all the chains, all the blocks of data afterwards along the same chain. If the chain grows very slowly, then that attack can more easily happen. So what we do is that the snapshot chain effectively takes a picture of the entire system or um, in more technical terms, it retrieves the most recent transaction of each individual account, uh, puts them together and creates a new block containing that information, pushes back into the snapshot chain. So it's basically reintroducing the concept of a blockchain into a traditional blockchain into the system. It's being used for verification. It's not being used for writing into the ledger. So mm -hmm. it won't hold up the writing of the transactions into the ledger. It's being used for confirmation. So to the extent that the confirmation doesn't pass, then there will be a rollback. Mm -hmm. uh, but hopefully the, this, uh, yes. So, but that, so, but basically that's the setup. You can think of the snapshot chain as a, uh, as a, as a way of, uh, basically making the tampering of um, tampering of transaction data much more yes. difficult. Mm, okay, so to uh, like if the snapshot chain like if if the snapshot chain take a snapshot of the transaction, there will be an, it will be like uh, people will no longer like have the access to fix that, like to add any new information as well, right? So the idea is that. If you, if someone wants to tamper with a certain piece of data mm -hmm. off of a particular account specific chain, yep. then that person would also need to make changes to the relevant block uh -huh. in the snapshot chain. And because the snapshot chain grows very fast, uh, that kind of attack will likely not succeed. Mm -hmm. I see your point. Okay, great. So guys, can you hear some noise, like some sound from my view? No, right? Okay, I will turn it on now. <laughs> okay, so wait. Here is question two, guys. Listen? Ready? Okay, here we go. What technology does VIT utilize for fast and asynchronous transactions? Can you hear me clearly? Please comment on that. Okay, one more time. What technology does VIT utilize for fast and asynchronous transactions? Very clearly, right? Anyway, if you can't hear me clearly, you can see on the chat box, on the live charts, and quickly fill, in it, fill it on the, form, on the form. Okay, so finish, guys. So the, question, so the question is, what technology does VIT use to, uh, to implement asynchronous architecture? <laughs> uh, let me 
Let me check here. Okay, you should double check with me. In order to like, uh, there will be like the clear for the audience. Okay, yeah. guys, so please wait. And, and by the way, I would recommend people not to comment in the live chat just to put the answer in the Google form because otherwise people will see the same answer. <laughs> you're, basically giving, you're basically giving your answer away to everyone. Wow. Okay, nice idea, people. Uh, sorry, audience, the community. Please like listen to Richard's command, advice, and then fill in the form quickly, quickly fill in the form in order to like, not miss any chance of the upcoming questions. Okay, so here we go, the next one. Uh, to talk about this consensus algorithm, this uh, is applying like eight D pass rate. Which is stands for which stands for hierarchical delegative proof of stake. So this is not the first time I've ever known about this consensus um, algorithm. But uh, I will be willing to listen to Richard, the COO, like explain more to me to understand it very very well. So can you tell me, uh, like how sure. like to t tell me more like specifically about that terms and can you tell me what is different from like. Uh, 8D ports and D ports. What is the difference here? And why yeah, so there's really three layers. There's POS, there's DPOS, and there's HDPOS, right? Mm -hmm. So proof of stake is the consensus algorithm for Ethereum. It's basically saying that nodes can vote with, uh, nodes will vote for a version of the ledger. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, and the, um, and the number of um, and, and and the number of votes is proportional to the number of um, like that they uh, the amount of the amount of tokens that you hold. Yeah. So that's POS. DPOS is delegated proof of stake, which basically means you have a number of representatives that are selected by the group, the, by the entire network, and then mm -hmm. this group of people, it's kind of like your senators or your congressmen, that will make the decision for you as to what the right ledger uh, looks like. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason for TPOS over POS is pr primarily performance driven. Uh, and the, the, what we do is hierarchical TPOS. And basically, mm -hmm. there's two levels. There is a local consensus group selected by each individual account. Mm -hmm. And then there's a global consensus group uh, on the snapshot chain level. Oh. So the local consensus group will select what the uh, local candidate uh, so when, when forking happens at the local level, uh, the local consensus group will select the version they think is correct. And then subsequently, all these candidate uh, ledgers will be compiled and subsequently go through another round of determination by the snapshot consensus group. So that's why So it goes through these two stages. And that's why it's called a hierarchical uh, EPOS algorithm. Hmm, okay, very clearly, very specifically. So I believe that the audience will get like at least basic uh, knowledge, like about this consensus algor algorithm. Is that okay? So that's it. Sorry if I'm uh, for my mispronunciations in some cases because English is not okay. my like mother language. So move on okay. to the seven. Questions. Is that the number seven or do you remember what number is that? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's number seven, yes. That's a question for me, right? To be clear. Mm, okay, I see. So number seven. Could you explain to me, like, let me know more about this smart contract of it. So with the language of solidity plus plus, so what is the improvement compared to other like smart contract languages? What is the improvement sure. here? Yeah, so our goal is to be maximally uh, compatible with Ethereum. So this way, if someone's been programming with Ethereum for a long time and um, they want to continue to use that language or they have existing programs they want to deploy on Vite, uh, mm -hmm. written in uh, Solidity, they, uh, they can do so, right? Um, now, the only uh, amount of porting they will have to do is when they take advantage of the asynchronous architecture. Mm -hmm. Basically, this is the... Uh, message-driven um, message driven architecture, a oh. different form of function calls that I previously yeah. talked about. So yeah. that would help, that would help, uh, that would help create faster programs, but there will be some code changes and we will be releasing a code porting guide to, uh, to the developers uh, when they want to deploy their application on Vite. 
Mm, okay, that's a great idea, Sam. I really appreciate like, the technology and the vision that VIT is aiming to do. Okay, great. Okay, Thank so you. the next one. One of the most impressive points that when people look at VIT is the partnership with Loopring. So could you reveal like how did VIT pursue Loopring to become your partner and how Loopring are helping VIT with the technical development? Sure. So Daniel Wong of Loopring is a personal friend of mine. They're also a strategic advisor. Uh, so the idea here is that we'll have built-in Loopring protocol in mm -hmm. our um, in, in, in within Vite. So mm -hmm. there will be a wallet. There will be a wallet app, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so from a user perspective, when they uh, one of the first applications they can use on top of Vite is a wallet app uh, mm -hmm. where they can. What, where they can uh, actually do transfers yeah, uh, of sure. assets, do exchange of asset with mm -hmm. um, uh, all, all do, do exchange of one asset with a different kind of asset. Mm -hmm. uh, all uh, and all of this is based upon the Loopring protocol. Okay. So I would say the um, relationship between Loopring and us is actually quite important. Okay, I see. So like, uh, like Vit can build the app to the Loopring protocol, right? So like a wallet. Yes. Yeah. So have you like it is in thought like uh, you have thought of that or it is the like the functions of Loopring protocol. Have you like think of like building any D apps in the in this protocol? Yeah. So with Loopring, um, I think the extent of application would just be the whole decentralized exchange aspect, and then mm -hmm. um, and then the users can basically. Uh, the users will be accessing that decentralized application from a wallet that we will be developing. Mm. So, but that's, I think that's the extent of our use of the Loopring protocol. Uh, in terms of other dApps, we're now talking with a couple other places uh, oh, for partnership. Um, and they're all financial technology related. I can't mm. reveal any identity at the moment, but yeah. when we're ready, we will be able to make an announcement. Okay, sure. Like being a ship partner, I will wait for your news, like happy news. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay, guys, here we come. Uh, another song from Big Bang, Last Dance. Okay, so can you hear me? Can you hear the voice? Can you, sorry, can you hear the sound? So here we come, the next question for you guys. Question three. So, okay, I will like take time, spend time for you to prepare. So here we go. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this programming language is maximally compatible with to what other programming language if you can't hear me very clearly you can see it on the live box please check it but sorry <laughs> sorry 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 okay this programming language is maximally compatible to what other programming language hey guys remember to fill in the form to fill in the form as well just to, just to make sure um, everyone can hear, I think the question is, what language is Vite maximally Compared compatible with? Yeah, yeah, so it is and, like the yeah. part of phase of my questions, right? Okay, and thanks put it in both the, yeah. put it in the Google, Put your answer in the Google form instead of the <laughs> live chat, because otherwise you're giving your answers away to everyone. I mean, you're yeah. not, I think it's fine to do it, actually. I mean, but I wouldn't do it. <laughs> okay, Richard. So here we go. Have you filled in the form yet? Okay, inform me in the live box. Yes or no? Okay, I'm waiting you. If you, as long as you finish, I will continue the AMA. So have you finished? I didn't see anything. So here we go. Anyway, we should continue. Okay, so question nine, I think. So. Um, can you tell me, like, how is the transaction fee um, is split in VIT? Like, I see, like, I, I can read somewhere that it's be like, I, I read somewhere, okay? So the light user do not have to pay the transaction fee in VIT. So can you clarify and confirm it for me? Yes, so every single user um, has a certain amount of basic transactions per allocation of TPS. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's a small and modest amount, mm -hmm. but if you are a light user, then you won't have to pay transaction fee. But if you are a heavy user, then that amount of TPS won't satisfy your need. So mm -hmm. you would go out and acquire more TPS. 
And there's a few ways to do it. One way is to consume your beat tokens to do so. Mm -hmm. um, another way to, so obviously then you need to buy beat, right? Or somehow acquire beat uh, uh, in order to um, consume beat for purchasing that additional TPS that you need. Another way to do it is that you can stake beat tokens uh, to um, kind of, uh, it, it's basically a way to acquire, uh, um, you can be, you can also, uh, uh, sorry, you can also stake beat tokens for a higher amount of TPS. Um, and uh, so in terms, of, and, and to your original question of uh, how much TPS we will be mm -hmm. uh, outputting, uh, at this point, we're not releasing any numbers. Okay. Uh, we think that TPS is a headline number, and then uh, there are many other uh, there are many, many other aspects associated with the performance of a blockchain. There's also security, there's scalability, and so on. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, so we're not releasing that number yet. Okay, sure. Like I respect your answer, and we like will not like go in detail with that question. So let's wait, guy, and see what is the transaction like speed will be. Okay, so here we come to the next questions for Richard, the CEO of it. So we've been talking about the good point of, and the innovation of it. So what about the any weaknesses? Can you tell me like any challenges that it has been facing up with? Uh, like any weaknesses to improve in the future and right now? Yeah, so you're asking about challenges. Um, yes. I would say number one is perhaps recruiting. Mm -hmm. uh, both on the developer side and on the uh, operation side. Mm -hmm. uh, so we already have um, we already have eleven engineering members in our team: mm -hmm. uh, engineers, product managers, QA, mm -hmm. uh, and they all come from top-notch Chinese companies. But as you know, um, you know it's uh, the blockchain developers are hard to find to start with, yeah, and good sure. well, good developers are hard to find to start with, and then good harder, blockchain right. developers are even harder. So mm -hmm. I think that we're very focused on making sure we get the right people in. Mm -hmm. uh, so so I think that's a just a consistent challenge. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and also the but 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 the other interesting thing about development is that. Um, it's not that if you double the amount of engineering force, you shrink the development time in half. It's all about finding the right people. So mm -hmm. one good engineer can uh, can rival a hundred mediocre ones. So that's a consistent, um, you know, um, uh, that's a consistent target for us to hire the best people. Uh, I think another challenge, yes, there's also on the operating operating side. Obviously, we're mm -hmm. looking for people in uh, content marketing, business development, uh, airdrop campaign design mm -hmm. and execution, and also um, uh, community in community uh, management. Um, so aside from this, I think the other thing would just be to make sure that we, uh, we hunker down and um, produce quality code. Uh, our code is now open source. Um, yeah. And um, so, as you know, there have been security issues left and right coming yeah. out from other public blockchains. And we want to make sure that uh, we don't fall in the same trap. Uh, so, we'll be doing uh, sufficient unit testing um, mm -hmm. and code review um, in, before, our, uh, before we have an MVP or a testnet. Hmm, okay, I see. So, to summarize, there will be three witnesses. Like, not kind of witnesses, right? It is not kind of challenge, I think. Like three steps yeah. that you gain, that you will go, like go for it in the future. Like after this AMA, I'm sure that there will be a lot of application form sent to you. Hey, I'm a blockchain tech, <laughs> I'm a community manager, I can help you. Something like that. Okay, that's it, that right? <laughs> okay, so now, hey guys, I like chit chat very much, so I will turn on some music now. Let's see what kind of music would it be. Uh, can you guess what name of the song is? Uh, it is loud enough. Okay. Anyway, forget it. Here that's, is the question for. Okay. Here is question for guys. Uh, I will take some minutes, some seconds for you to prepare to type. Here we go. What blockchain project is Vit partner with and implementing their protocol? So here we have some keywords, blockchain project, sorry, this partner, 
implementing their protocol. Three quick words, guys. So quickly, do you remember the rule? Question four's answer must be commented on the uh, comments box below this video, not in the chat box, not in the lies box. Okay, remember that, guys. So here we got some seconds for you. So we have right now four questions overall, right? So yeah. one so more question. Sorry, just to repeat the question. Uh, the question is, who is the partner mm -hmm. um, for yeah. which we'll be implementing their yeah, protocol, protocol in our system? All right, thanks for that, Richard. So people will no sure problem. to like uh, get the question more, right? Okay, so another one. Guys, have you finished typing? Now, focus on the AMA. I'm about to start right now. Now, continuing. Okay, so Richard, here we come the next questions for you. So, um, to talk about like uh, the distribution, token distributions of it. Um, can you tell me more about the token distribu distributions? Um, sure. So, are you asking about the token release schedule? Or, uh, I mean, so our tokens are ERC20. Uh, mm -hmm. So we will convert to native token once we have a mainnet. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of distribution, so we, we completed our private round uh, mm -hmm. where every investor had the exact same deal. We had no, you know, cornerstone investors with a bonus. We had no cornerstone investor with okay, a so bonus. Okay, so no bonus. So it's, uh, the, the price is, uh, one ETH equals 7,000 lead tokens for everybody. One ETH equals, one ETH, ether. One equals 7, ether, 000, okay, one ether. 7,000 lead tokens for everyone. And then in terms of distribution, um, it will have a lockup schedule. So the tokens are being released on a monthly basis. Every month you get 20% of the tokens you purchased. Um, so in five months, you get all 100% of your tokens. Okay, so five months and one ether, ether will equal to 700 bit rise. No, no, 7,000, 7,000. Okay, sorry, 7,000 bit. Okay, yes. great number. So what about, can you reveal like a little bit about the date of the release token, token release? Yeah, so um, it really depends on when you made the purchase. So when the private round closed, um, the tokens started were started re being released on uh -huh. June 15th. Okay. So June 15th, which is 15th of last month, is the mm -hmm. first day when the first batch of 20% of the tokens were released. Okay, sure. Uh, so is that the reason why VIT is listed list on some exchange like IDEX, Balazi, and Hobbit? Is that the yeah. reason? So the exchanges that you mentioned, um, they do trade mm -hmm. our product. Yeah, uh, they I do can trade see. our tokens. But uh, so in IDEX case, they're a decentralized exchange. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I believe one of our fans applied on our behalf and then the token started trading. So it's not really an official um, yeah. action. And then on the other exchanges that you mentioned, they're extremely small with very little liquidity. Uh -huh. And they also listed us without involving us. Yeah. So um, I think there are some exchanges that look for good projects and then just uh, list them because okay. these are the only places where people can find them. Mm -hmm. uh, so this way they can accumulate more users. But this week we'll be making, uh, we'll be providing some information about uh, a major exchange that we are going to get listed on. Yeah. Uh, so. I, so so I, so I'm very careful with my words. I'm saying we'll provide some information about okay. it. We're not as announcing it, but we'll make it, provide some okay. information about it. Uh, yeah, and by the way, I'm not sure if we're, you're going to also ask about the crowd sale, but I'm also happy to uh, discuss why we're not doing a crowd sale, we're only doing airdrop. So no crowd sale, only private sale and airdrop, right? Yes, so the reason why we're doing that is really twofold. The first reason is a uh, consideration for compliance. Mm -hmm. uh, to do uh, a to do a proper crowd sale, um, you need to uh, do KYC with uh, people yeah. in different countries and be compliant with rules in different uh, under different re uh, regulatory bodies, um, and uh, so it, it, so we, so so that's reason number one. Reason number two is that you know, we discover that with a lot of a lot of projects, the crowd sale is meant to generate hype and mm -hmm. fear out, um, and then. Uh, 
you know, the, these actions tend to attract investors that uh, don't necessarily know a whole lot of the project, but mm -hmm. are willing to make a purchase mm -hmm. in an effort to flip the token once the uh, once it's traded on an exchange. Yeah. And we kind of we kind of uh, take a, have a different mentality. We would really love to attract uh, loyal followers and people that care about our technology and care about our community. So uh, one way of doing so is through this community rewards program. I actually hesitate to even call it a airdrop. Airdrop because airdrop implying airdrop implies getting something for nothing, and we are very much about making sure people uh, contribute before they acquire the tokens. Yeah, so I can... that's, our, that's our thinking behind this whole decision. Yeah, thanks for your answer, Richard. So, like you, they're really cool, like the airdrop, like the free tokens for the art, for the community, like airdrop as the other product call, right? So you call it like, community rewards, which uh, require people to understand about the product. So remember that, guys. You might understand about yeah. the product in order to well, like get the word. understanding of the product or contributing to the community in some way. Yeah. Because we also understand that the um, the level of uh -huh. so some some people might be experts in blockchain, some people might just be new to the space. Yeah. But for those that care about our product, without being an expert in it, we would also find a way to reward them. Mm, okay, so, so any kind yeah. of contributions, so, right? Yeah, I believe at the beginning of this AMA, you also mentioned that this is what the AMA airdrop or AMA community rewards is only one part of our whole campaign. Uh, the whole campaign is going to last for weeks and there will be other announcements being made. So make sure you pay attention to our announcement channel. Okay, so guys, like join the announcement channel in order to get updated, right? Okay, so that's about like explanation about the community reward and the token metric and so let's wait for me. Um, wait, that is problem with my bell, so I will turn on the music again. So let me find another music. Perfect deal by Beyonce. Oh, who is the fan of this song? <laughs> okay, guys, so here's the last question. Remember, this is the last question, and if you hear me clearly, try on typing, because this will be the last question, and the form will be closed in five minutes if this AMA club, like, end. So, listen, 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 listen. So, what was the price of it during their crowd sale? Do I need to repeat it one more time? So, look at the chat, live chat, guys. Okay, live chat, live chat. Check on that. Okay, so, do I need to repeat that question one more time, Richard? Oh, sure, yeah. So, the question is, what is the price of the beat token during crowd sale? So, for example, one beat equals how many tokens? Mm -hmm. So, great. Okay, thanks for, like, reminding me, of, remind me about that. So... Hey, sorry, I can't hear anything anymore on your end. Okay, so can you hear Okay, I can hear you now. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened. So what about now? Uh, uh, it's a little bit better, but still not very loud. So what about this? There's problem yeah, this with good, my yeah. mic. This is good now. Okay, yeah. so guys. Okay, so let's see. Okay, here are the questions for you. So not kind of question, but the opinion. Have you heard about the White Vietnam Blockchain Day? So, because our part are holding this conference in the end of July, and let me have you start. Uh, hey, Bonita, I believe you're holding your mic in a way that prevents the voice from going in, so you can't hold it like that. Okay, so I will fix it. Sorry, okay, guys. Now I, now I can hear it. What about this? Yeah, I can hear it now, yes. Okay, sorry guys. So here the question for you, Richard. So um, our our partner, Bigger Cabrio, had released uh, are going to hold an event in Hanoi, Vietnam, in the end of July called Vietnam Blockchain Day. So uh, there will be like a lot of potential projects that coming to that conference, like uh, Zura Network. And have you like? 
Will you come to that conference? Oh, are you extending an invitation to come to your conference in Vietnam? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so I, I believe this is at the end of July, right? Mm -hmm. So it's happening in just a few weeks time. Yeah. Um, so I think every time we travel to a conference, we bring a team of people. Uh, mm -hmm. So I need to make sure that I coordinate with my team members uh, yeah. before we can come to a decision. But it sounds like you have some pretty interesting uh, companies coming. You mentioned Jura Networks, right? Yeah. And, and I, I believe I believe you sent in the invitation you sent me. There's, I believe Tomo Chain. Is that right? Uh, yes. Actually, we are discussing with them right now. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So yeah. So um, uh, we will make plans on our side, and then we'll get back to you on that. But thank you very much for the invite. Mm -hmm. Anyway, like um, we all, like I really appreciate it if you schedule your like work time and like the well you know to join the conference and meet like people of ICOs and in person. Yeah, great. Sure, sure, absolutely. Anyway, yeah, great, Richard. So guys, uh, that there will be a little time for the end of the AMA. So thank you very much, Richard, for providing us a lot of useful information about it. So it's been an honor to have you in this AMA. So guys, submit oh, your... Yeah. So thank you very much, Bonita. You, uh, you've, been, um, you've been very helpful. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to remind everyone to, uh, to make a tweet and also to leave a comment in the public section. Um, mm -hmm. The same comment that's in question number four, I believe. Number four. Yeah, okay. so this, this is a way for us to identify to make sure that you were watching uh, the video. And the, uh, and the, the public and the Google form will, um, the, the submission for Google form will end uh, five minutes after the, the AMA con concludes. Mm -hmm. So is that a goodbye word for the community, Richard? So let's yeah, say so, a lot of yeah, the just, goodbye for... I just, uh, okay, just, sorry. Sorry. I just wanted to, I just wanted to emphasize, no problem. I just wanted to emphasize that uh, the AMA Community Rewards Program is only one part of the Community Rewards Program. Uh, you guys may have noticed that we had quite a few AMAs this week. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll have a few coming up uh, next week and the week after as well. But um, stay tuned. Uh, and uh, and I and I'm sure you guys have noticed that um, we have. We have we have we have put out hints uh, in various places for yeah. where to collect tokens. Um, so pay attention to our channel, and uh, we'll be releasing more of those little puzzles. Okay, so guys, like keep an eyes on the announced channel and look for the hint. Okay, so that is the end of the AMA. Thank you guys very much for watching us and listen to the information. And if you have any comments, please leave it like in the comment box. And see you in the next video. Goodbye. Richard, say Thank goodbye to the audience. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you guys. Bye.